Undoubtedly the loudest I've ever heard in this place. My goodness, my goodness, my goodness. Now, was this, this was about Jesus or was this about Monday being off? Which one? Both. Okay, both. We, we're thanking Jesus because we off on Monday. There we go. 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 Guys, we, we're getting to the end of this story. Inside of the life of David. Now, listen to me. We started a series looking at the life of David in January. Uh, it's called Finish Strong. And, and what it rests on, the entire series rests on this premise that God is always, somebody say God is always, God is always. always doing something new inside of our lives. And the question really comes down to this one thing. Can we finish strong in the new thing that God has put inside of our life? And what we're doing, we're looking throughout the ancient wisdom from 2 Samuel. We're looking at King uh, David. He becomes the king. And he does a lot of good things. He does a lot of bad things. There are a lot of people around him doing good and bad things. And what we're doing is we're going through each story and we're looking at each story and we're pulling out the wisdom that we can use in 2022 in order to be able to finish strong. And so last week we looked, we talked about godly advice and we saw how David's son Absalom did not take godly advice. And because of that, this is, this is what happens. We talked about this earlier. He dies. His new thing is over. Short-lived, weeks. He went from being the king to being dead just like that because he did not take godly advice. We saw that last week. David asked that his soldiers would not kill his son. But it did not happen that way. There was an opportunity for Joab not to kill his son. But it did not happen that way. And what happens, I want you guys to see this, that this dream, this, this thing that David, start, imagine this now, that he started out as a little boy when somebody told him, you're going to be the king. And he defeats this giant. He goes through all this process and he gets to the palace and he becomes a king. And now a part of his dream, a part of what he saw, it is not going to happen. It is not going to come back. It is over for his son, Absalom. And I want to read, starting now. I want to read, starting now. Absalom is dead. 2 Samuel 18, starting at the 31st verse, it says, Then uh, the Cushite arrived and said, My lord the king, hear the good news. Good news to who? The lord has, vind ha the lord has vindicated you today by delivering you from the hand of all who rose up against you. The king asked the Kusite, is the young man Absalom safe? He didn't want his son to die. The dream, the thing he saw, it involved Absalom being a part of it. He's still holding out hope, although he knows. At this point, he knows he's basically in a state of denial. He knows at this point that, that the thing that he dreamed is not going to happen the way that he saw it happening. Is the young man Absalom safe? The, Kush, the Kushite replied, may the enemies of my Lord, the king, and all who rise up to harm you be like this young man, 
His answer is, he's dead. Let's go a little bit further. The king was shaken. He went up to the room over the gateway and wept. As he went, he said, oh, my son, Absalom. My son, my son, Absalom, if only I had died instead of you. Oh, Absalom, my son, my son. Joab was told, the king is weeping and mourning for Absalom and for the whole army. The victory that day was, was turned into mourning. Because on that day, the troops heard it said that the king is grieving for his son. The men stole into the city that day as men steal in who are ashamed when they flee from battle. But you guys can see this. What, what's happening is the impact of a person that is mourning, of a person that is grieving, and the impact that that has on everybody around. Just, just put a little pin in it. I want you guys to see that. Uh, and then he comes and he says, the king covered his face and cried aloud, oh, my son Absalom, he's hurting guys. Oh, Absalom, my son. My son, I want to just pause there for a second. Because I need you to get the rhema out of this. I need you to understand what's happening here. David is losing something that is very dear to him. Something that he never imagined he would lose. Something that as we are studying his new thing years later, and we're thinking about all the wisdom to take out of it and everything, when David would have been thinking about this, this Absalom, this is his favorite son, he saw this Absalom one day being the king behind him. His, his thing, his new thing, his life, everything, was wrapped around this relationship with this son. And now this thing is over with. That's why he keeps repeating over and over again. Oh, my son, Absalom, he is going through. He is going through. He is going through. You feel that? Let's go, let's go a step further. It says, then Joab went into the house to the king and said, today you have humiliated all the men uh, who have just saved your life and the lives of your sons and daughters and the lives of your wives and concubines. You love those who hate you, and you hate those who love you. You have made it clear today that the commanders and their men mean nothing to you. I see that you would be pleased if Absalom were alive today, and all of us were dead. Now go out and encourage your men. I swear by the Lord that... If you don't go out, not a man will be left with you by nightfall. This will be the worst. This will be worse for you than all the calamities that have come on you from your youth till now. So the king got up. He took his seat in the gateway. When the men were told the king is sitting in the gateway, they all came before him. Meanwhile, the Israelites had fled to their own homes. Father God, we come to you now in the name of your son, Yeshua the Christ God. We just pray over this word that you begin to speak to us, God, that you will help us to identify those areas in our life where things didn't go exactly how we planned, where we've been faced with tribulation, and where we've gotten ourselves stuck, places where we might be uh, not operating the way we're supposed to operate because of the past hurt, the past pain, the things that were unexpected, the things that have happened inside of our life that were out of our control, Lord. And we're praying, God, that you will give us the power to be able to get back up again, just like David gets back up again. We pray this in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. To God be the glory. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I 
I want to talk with you guys today about the way that we deal with tribulation. And this is what I believe, is that each and every one of us are going to go through some tribulation. Something's going to happen, some affliction. There'll be some sorrow. There'll be something. Even as we're going through our new thing, there'll be things that'll happen in our world that will shake us up, that will cause us to doubt, that will make us feel as if we cannot go on. This is going to happen in every single one of our lives. And one of the reasons why this happens inside of our lives is because we think about our new thing, we think about our life, we think about our family, our jobs, our careers, like we think about a snow globe. We, we believe, I love this snow globe, it says, love always wins. We believe that, we know that, we believe that, we know that love always wins, and we believe that love always wins, and, and you know, we like these snow globes because inside of the snow globe, I like this is snow globe 2.0 because instead of snow, it has glitter, but inside of the snow globe, we see that we can shake it up whenever we want to shake it up, and we can make it fun, but we have complete control over what's happening inside of this snow globe, that the stuff that's happening on the outside of this snow globe has no impact on what's happening on the inside of this snow globe. And for many of us, this is what happened when we accepted Christ into our life. We thought that we were going to be living inside of an insulated snow globe. We thought that for the rest of our life, no matter what was happening on the outside of this snow globe, what was happening on the outside of us, Nothing will come on the inside of us and cause us any trouble, and there'll be glitter falling out of the sky, and every day will be rosy. For, for many of us, when we said, I do, we did a wedding yesterday. For many of us, when we said, I do, this is what we thought we were saying, I do to. We thought we were saying, I do to a, a snow globe. That, that, that every so often we shake this thing up and celebrate that no matter what's happening, and we say stuff like this, no matter what's happening out there in the world, that is why the vows are so specific. Because the, the people who wrote the vows, they understand that there will be sickness and health, that there will be rich and poor. And what they're saying is, when the world doesn't look like your snow globe, will you stay together? Will you fight through? For, for many of us, you know, we, especially as we start a new thing, as we're trying to get into a, a, a new relationship, as we're trying to get into a new job, as we're trying to get into this place where we, we, we're trying to do this new thing, especially when we're trying to do this new thing we feel like God has called us to do, we actually believe, you may not want to admit it, sounds kind of silly when I talk about it, doesn't it? But this is what we believe, that whatever it is that we, God has put, the passion that God has put on your heart, and to think, God wants me to do this thing, and so God wants me to do it, I'm going to be in this snow globe, God will shake it up for me, I won't even have to shake, this glitter will just, will just fall out of the sky. Everything will just be great for all of my life. And for some of us, we bought into this. If I just could just think positively, if I, if I could just say, if I put affirmations on the window, if I, if I, if I would just put, uh, get uh, words of wisdom, scriptures every day inside of my life, that, that I can live inside of this snow globe and everything will be perfect for me. For some of us, we thought when we had children that, we would just do everything that our parents didn't do right, right? That's what we said. Well, I'm just going to do everything that my parents didn't do right, and now I'm going to build a snow globe around them. And, and, and what will happen is love will always win, and I'll shake them up, and they'll, always, they'll go to school. They'll do everything on the list that I thought, that I told them. They'll do so much better than me. They'll go so much, much further than me. But here's the reality. Life is not a snow globe. Here's the reality. Life doesn't always fit into the glitter and the glam and the protection of your thoughts, your expectations. And here's the reality. For some of us, you will never have the relationship that you want to have with your parents or your child. For some of us, here's the reality. I'm, listen. Here's the reality. This is the rhema from David's story. That, that for some of us, that thing that is happening in your marriage, 
You keep sh shaking it up. This is not going to fix it. For some of us, although we want mama to be with us forever, although we want dad to be with us forever, although we want our children not to go before us, I witnessed this this weekend, although we want our children, in the snow globe world, children don't go before their parents. But in this world, children go before the parents from time to time. And it doesn't mean that you did anything wrong. It doesn't mean that because the marriage didn't work that you, it, it was all your fault. It doesn't mean because the child didn't grow up the way that you wanted them, the possibility that you saw inside of them, that it was all your fault, that you didn't build a strong enough snow globe. That because things did not turn out the way that you thought that they were going to turn out, that it was your fault, that it was your issue, that it was something. It, it doesn't mean that because that person died, because that person was taken away, that God was angry with you or that God punished you or that God punished them. It doesn't mean any of that. What it means is we've built so many snow globes. How can God keep up? With all the snow globes we, and all the expectations and all the ways that we designed, we have wanted to be God for so long that we put snow globes over this and snow globes over that. And, and when they don't come together for us, then we turn around and we blame somebody. We act out. We do all these things. And here's the reality. Nobody, not the Bible, not anybody, Ever told, listen, none of it is true. I'm so passionate about this, guys. Because this is breaking us up. This is separating us from people. This is separating us from each other. This is separating people from the church. This, this thing right here that I'm talking about right now is one of the things that's keeping so many people away from loving God, from being in a relationship with God. Because, listen to this, they had a snow globe image. And it didn't happen the way they thought it was going to happen. And so not only did they give up on God, in some instances, they gave up on relationships. In some instances, they gave up on genders. In some instances, they gave up on life altogether. And here's the reality of it all. This is what Yeshua says. He says that there are absolutely going to be times inside of our life when we completely fall down. I'm talking about Things do not go the way we plan them. There'll be times when you will do something that will cause you to fall down. There'll be times when somebody else will do something that will cause you to fall down. And there'll be times like I just experienced where nobody didn't do anything but something went wrong and they're falling down to the ground. And this is what happens. This is what Jesus says. I'm telling you all this stuff. I'm talking to you now. I'm trying to do exactly what Jesus was doing to his disciples. He's talking to his disciples and he's saying, you're doing everything the right way. You're supporting me. You're with me. I'm trying to do everything the right way, but this is what's about to happen. They're getting ready to come and get me and they're going to kill me. They're going to flog me. They're going to take me away. I'm try We've tried to do everything the right way, but it's not going to go the way that we had it planned. And this is what Jesus says. I'm telling you this so you can have peace. This is what he's saying, that in me, you may have peace that in this world, I want you guys to see this. You will have tribulation in this world. There will be losses. In this world, you will put your all into a job and potentially one day somebody may come in and say, we no longer need this. Your position is no longer needed. In this world, you may go, you may try hard in school, and you may do everything that you can do. And here's the reality. You may get to the end, and then all of a sudden, something can happen, and you may lose that dream. In this world, there may be a dream that you have, and it may not ever come. The snow globe, it may not ever come. In this world, there's going to be tribulation. In this world, in this world, that, that extra room that you have. For that child, you may not ever be able to have a child. In this world, dad may not be there to walk you down the aisle. In this world, you, you, you may get divorced. In this world, your child may die. In this world, this is what he says, you will have tribulation. 
But this is what he said. It is so important. In your new thing, you may have, you will have some tribulation. You will be met with some type of an obstacle that you'll have to get through. And this is what he says. Do not give up because school didn't work out. Do not give up because the marriage didn't work out. Do not give up because you lost the parent or you lost the child. Do not give up. This is what I need you to do. Be of good cheer. I need you to trust me. I need you to believe. I need you to pray. I need you to get to this place where be of good cheer means to be courageous, to not give up, to not allow yourself. You're going to fall down. But, but what Jesus says is when you fall down, I need you to get back up again. I, I need you to get to this place where you don't allow anything that happens. I know. Listen, I, I know. I, I know we've lost. I know we've seen hurt. I know we've seen pain. I, I know we've seen all different types of tribulation throughout the course of our life. And for some of us, we've seen multiple, multiple tribulations, tribulation after tribulation after tribulation. But listen, regardless of we, whether we've seen a little tribulation or a lot of tribulation, the answer to tribulation is the same. We have to get up. Every time we get knocked down, we have to get back up. Every time we get knocked down, you have to figure out a way to get back up again. And here's the amazing thing. Jesus would not put this in the Bible if you could not do it. Jesus would not say to you when you go through tribulation and you get knocked down to get back up, to be of good cheer, to be of good courage, to get to this place where you get yourself back up and continue to push forward and continue to believe him. Because this is so much about faith. If you look closely what, to what he says, you are of good cheer. You get up. You continue to go forward. Not because you are strong. Not because you have it together. Not because of your plan B, plan C, plan Z. But because I've already overcome the world. It doesn't matter what you've been through. It doesn't matter whether your snow uh, globe was thrown against the wall and crushed. I am Yeshua the Christ, and I have power to put it back together again. Listen, all the king's horses and all the king's men, they may not be able to fix your situation. They may not be able to help your situation. But Jesus, but Jesus, but Jesus, but Jesus, it doesn't matter what you lost. It doesn't matter what dream went away. It doesn't matter what what died, who died, or what you've been through. Jesus, he has the super glue. He can put it back together again. He can put you back together again. And listen to me. When you fall, you don't have to stay down. When you fall, you do not have to stay down because you have arisen. See, Jesus fell. <laughs> they thought they had him. He, they thought he was gone, right? They put him in a tomb. He fell. But he is a risen Savior. So although he fell, he got back up again, right? Although we fall down, there's an opportunity for us to what? Get back up again. And this is what David begins to show us inside of this story. But here's the problem with it. For many of us, we have unhealthy responses to falling down. When, when things don't go the way the globe, with the way we thought they were going to go, I'm going to go and, and I'm going to do this thing and then this thing going to happen. And love is always going to win and, and, and it doesn't work out that way. What happens is we get stuck. Man. That globe was supposed to have been my life. Man, I can't believe that I'm not going to get that thing that I thought I was going to get, that dream that I thought I was going to have. I'm, I, you know, I'm not, for some of us, hey, it's, God, I'm not cool with this, right? You get stuck. You get into this place where all you talk about, all you think about is the thing that didn't happen or the thing that, that or the person that died or the thing that went away or the dream that got canceled. And we get to this place inside of our life where we just want to continue. We're trying to figure out a way. That's what happens. We're trying to figure out a way to go back and get something that God has already said no to. For, for some of us, we don't just get stuck, but we begin to act out. We begin to do stuff out of character in order. This is what, this is what we're trying to do. We're trying to kill the pain. But, but what we realize is what we realize. Pain killers don't kill pain. They just take your mind off of the pain. 
And as soon as the painkiller is gone, listen, you're not going to drink it. You're not going to drink the pain away. You're just acting out. You're not going to, you can't sleep. There's not enough pornography. You can't sleep with enough people. The pain is still going to be there when you, when you get out of that bed and put your clothes on. The pain is still going to be there. You, you can't smoke it away. The only thing you can do is get yourself into a position where you act out so much that you lock yourself into a season. You lock yourself into an addiction. You get yourself stuck in a place where you don't want to be and you look around and the situation, you just get further away from the globe. Not just that, but for many of us, when tribulation hit, when we fall down, when the globe doesn't work out, we give up. And here's the amazing part. Here's the rhema for us in David's story. David loses his son. David gets to this place where things didn't go. The globe didn't work. The king, with all the power in the world, with everything inside of his power, he couldn't get everything to stay together the way that he wanted it to stay together. And he gets to this place where he loses this beautiful thing inside of his life. And he, just like us, has the opportunity to get stuck. He, just like us, has the opportunity to act out. He could have killed Joab. He could have killed these other men. Who was a part of this? He could have done all these things. could have got angry angry, acted out. He could have gave up. I, listen, I don't want to be the king anymore. I'm done with this king stuff. But, but, but you know what he does? He, he, he mourns. This is what we have to do when we get to that place and the thing that we thought was going to happen, the person that we thought was going to be there, the dream that we thought we were going to be able to walk in, the thing we thought we were going to be able to walk in, the point where we fall down because of the tribulation, because of sorrow, because of, of, of a death. This is what you have to do. You gotta mourn. Like, like it is okay to not be okay for a season, of, a period of time. It's okay. I know the world has made us believe in all this foolishness that we have to always be okay. It is okay to not be okay. Look what happened. The king was shaken. Snow globe broke. Sun died. It wasn't supposed to be like this. It's okay to say, my mom, my dad, they should have been here now. It's okay to say, my child should have been here now. It's okay to say, my marriage, it shouldn't have never failed. It's okay to say that the thing I thought, the job, the, the career, the school, the opportunity, it, it should have been here. I should have been able to keep it together. It's okay to be able to say that, that I am so confused right now. Think This does not make sense. It is okay to mourn. It is okay to mourn because the first part of mourning is shock. You, you, you just shook it. You just, I'm, I'm, I'm all messed up. Not, not, not just shocked, but he went up to the room over the gateway. He went up above everybody. So imagine a person crying out. It'd be like you yelling out at the higher point. He is not hiding in any way what he's going through. He is not hiding anything about, you know, we've been taught we've got to be strong. We've got to show everybody. We can't let anybody know that we're hurting. We can't let anybody know this thing is hurting us. He, he does the opposite. He mourns. He goes up. And he weeps. And this word weeps means he literally goes up. He's yelling. He's sobbing. He's snotting. He mourns. Look what it says. As he went, uh, he said, oh, my son, Absalom, my son, Abs my son, Absalom, if only I had, he's in depression. He's going through all the stages of grief, all the stages of mourning. He allows himself to mourn. And this is what, I, and this is what I've been sending to tell you. It's, it's okay not to be okay. Your snow globe. The job, the career, the child, the parent, your snow globe, the thing that you thought was going to happen. You prayed, you fasted, you thought, you know, God is surely going to show up on this thing, and it did not happen the way. An unexpected tribulation, something came out of the left field, you had no idea that this thing could happen, and it happened. And it's okay for you to mourn it. It's okay for you 
to go before the Lord. It's okay for you to, I'm talking about mourn it, not mourn something else. He's saying over and over again, what are you mourning, David? My son, Absalom, my son. It's okay for you to call. Listen, for some of us, we've not called that thing by name. It's okay for you to say, it is okay. It doesn't sound selfish for you to say, I am mourning the fact that I did not finish this. I'm mourning the fact that I did not get married. I'm mourning the fact that I got divorced. I'm mourning the fact that God took my parent. I'm mourning the fact that God took my child. It is okay for you to mourn. I I want you to see this because what David shows us in his story is how to effectively mourn. Because effective mourning does not, David never blames. Well, I told Joab not to kill him. He never blames. This is the result of me and that mistake that I made. You know, he never blames. But so many times when we mourn, we mourn ineffectively, right? Because we begin to blame. God, why did God, why did you do this? David never talks to God. He never talks to himself. He never blames anybody, nobody, not even Joab, who actually did it. He never blames, because blaming people does not help you get through the mourning process. It only gets you stuck. It only makes you act out. It only makes you give up. Not only did he not blame, but he didn't hide. He went up. He let everybody know, listen, this is what I have going on. He didn't suppress. He didn't act like it wasn't bothering him. Well, you know what? You know, Absalom should have never tried to come against me. He didn't suppress it. He didn't try to push it down. He dealt with it in the moment. He was effective in dealing with it. He didn't try to define it. He didn't try to say, this happened because of this, or this happened because of that, or if I had done this, this would have happened differently. He's not asking why. He just mourns. Uh, not only is it okay for you to mourn, but I want you guys to see this. It, it's okay for you, to, for you to get help. If you are struggling with a snow globe situation, things didn't go the way you had planned. Listen, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to you. Drinking, drinking it is not going to help you. Smoking it is not going to help you. Trying to do something different. Trying to replace it with something else. None of that stuff's never going to happen. You'll never be able to replace the snow globe situation in your life. None of that is ever going to... That is not an effective way to do it. The best thing that you can do once you've mourned it, and especially if you mourn it, and you mourn it, and you mourn it, and you continue to mourn it, and you don't feel yourself getting out of the mourning phase, the next thing for you to do is to get help. He's talking to Joab, and he's lit. Here's the amazing part. David the king is listening to Joab. He's listening. He's taking advice from somebody. During this time of mourning for him, he's not saying, don't say anything to me. Stay away from me. I don't want to hear from you. I don't want to deal with you. He is open to counsel. He is open to advice. And what the, the advice that he gets from Joab is powerful. Joab says, get up, man. Joab says, I, I, I know you fell down. But, but this is what I need you to do. I need you to come on, not just get up, but I need you to get to this place where you can go out and incur. This is what, this is what happens with your snow globe experience. I, I was sitting there talking to Mr. Warren. And Mr. Warren, who lost his son less than a week ago, almost a week ago, he is sitting there talking to me. And this is what he said to me. He said, listen, I don't have, I, I'm not sure what's going on, why this happened. I, I'm not happy that it happened. He says, I am in so much pain that this snow, go, this snow globe, I, I had no idea my son would get killed in a car accident on his way driving on the freeway. I had no idea this is a snow globe incident for me, Pastor Me, But he said to me, he looked at me and he said to me, but, but I believe now that I've tapped into a hurt and a pain that will allow me to go out and encourage other people and talk to other people. He says, I can't imagine that there's a person that I will encounter in this life who, feel, who will feel worse than what I feel right now. And he says, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray that God will give me the words to be able to express what I feel. I'm going to pray that God will put me in the company of people who need to be encouraged when they're going through any loss because I'm believing that I can use this loss. I can use use this hurt. I can use this broken snow globe experience to, to encourage other people. 
Joab said, this is the advice Joab said, gives him. He says, come on, it's, you got to get up. You can't stay in this place of depression. You can't stay in this place of hurt. You can't stay in this place of pain because it's not healthy for you. You're going to make bad decisions in this place. You're going to hurt yourself in this place. He says, this will be the worst. This will be worse for you than all the trouble that has come to you from your, your youth until now. And what he's saying is, when we get into this place where we allow the snow globe breaking in our life to dominate us and to control us and to impact everything, our happiness, our joy. I mean, years later, we can't get past the issue. We can't get past the mistake. We can't get past the affliction. We can't get past the tribulation. We're still thinking about it. We're stuck in it. We're still acting out because of it. We've given up. We constantly give up. That's the thing about these snow globe experiences. Once you give up in one, you, now you become a person that give up. And every time you come up against a challenge because you look back on that thing and you say, snow globes aren't real. I'm, I'm, this is broken. I'm, I'm letting it go. I'm not even going to try. And what he says to him is, if you allow yourself, who's falling down in here? This is what he's saying to you. If you allow yourself to stay down, this is going to be the worst thing that has ever happened to you. All the stuff that's happened in your past, including the thing that you lost, is going to be the worst thing that ever happened to you. It is time for you to get back up. And, and look what David does. He gets help, and look what he does. So the king got up. Not only did he get up, I want you guys to see this. He got up and he, set, he went back into his new thing. He went back to work. He went back to his family. He went back to that place where he got hurt at. He went back in front of those people who knew he was grieving. He went back to school. He went back to a family. He got married again. He got remarried. He let go of some things. He went back and he became the person he was before the thing was taken. Before the snow globe broke. He became that person, the good person that God created him to be. He went back to who he was. He went back to being a child of God. He went back to trusting in the Lord. He went back to understanding that in this world, there will be tribulation, but I can be of good cheer because I know a God, I know Yeshua the Christ, who has already overcome this situation. And regardless of what you've been faced with, regardless of what knocked you down, regardless of how you fell down, regardless if it was your mistake or somebody else's mistake, this is what David says to us right now. You can get back up. You can get back up. When? Right now. He says, get up now. You can get right back up right now. You don't have to wait another day. You don't need another thing to happen inside of your life. You don't need another counseling session. You don't need more money. You don't need more time. You don't need to find a new opportunity. You don't need to re-enroll. You can get up right now. And look what happened when he got up. All the people were told about it. And look what they did. They all came into his presence because now that you have fallen and gotten back up, now God is going to automatically start sending people to you whose snow globes were broken. And you can say to them, yeah, I fell, but I got back up. Yeah, I fell, but God got me back up. Yeah, I got divorced, but God got me back up. Yeah, I made that mistake, but God got me back up. Yeah, I lost that child, but God got me back up. Yeah, I lost my parents. But God got me back up. Yeah, I may not ever be able to have children, but God got me back up. I'm talking to somebody right now. Somebody, somebody in this place knows what I'm talking about because you've been down for too long. And what God, God sent you here today. You weren't even supposed to be here today. Who is? Who am I talking? Who am I talking to? You weren't even supposed to be here today enemy throwed everything he could to pop. You weren't supposed to be joining with us today. The enemy throwed everything he could, distracted you, kids yelling, all kind of stuff going, internet not being able to connect. The enemy tried to do everything he could to make it to where you were not going to be here today, but you're here today, and this is what I want to tell you. Get up. It's time for you to get up. God is saying to you, it's time for you to get up. God is saying to you, God is saying to you, God is saying to you. He's not saying that what happened to you wasn't real. Jesus acknowledges that tribulation will happen. But what he said is also real. That is, two things can be real at the same time. 
Even though tribulation has happened, you can be of good courage. Why? Not because of what you can do, but because what Christ can do inside of you and what Christ can do inside of your situation. And not just you get up. This is the amazing part. Do you understand that if you get up, that the generations behind you will get up? But if you stay down, the generations behind you will stay down. That if you get up, that if you defeat this thing, that the generations behind you would be able to defeat this thing. But that if you stay in this thing, the generations behind you are going to have to stay in this thing. That if you allow this thing to t- keep you down, that the people behind you are going to stay down. But if you get up, the people around you, behind you, in front of you, when they see what God is doing inside of you, they're going to get up and we're all going to celebrate the Lord because you got back up again. How, 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 how do we get back up again? How, how do we get back up again? This is what Paul wrote to the Roman church. This is what he said. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in. <laughs> Continue steadfast in prayer. If you're stuck, if you're acting out, if you've given up, my guess is one, if not all of these things are not operating inside of your life. But at the moment that you start to rejoice and hope, this is what, this is what Joab is saying. That was a victory today. Although that was a loss, that was also a victory. You're focused on the loss and not focused on the victory. Although you have not uh, received everything that you thought you would do, although things didn't go exactly as you thought they were planned, although your snow globe broke, you need to realize that God has been good to you, that, that, that you need to rejoice and hope. You need to believe that the same God that got you through the last situation will get you got to have hope. You got to begin to believe that God can fix this thing, that God can put my snow globe back together, that God will give me. Listen, God, you keep that old broke snow globe. Give me a new snow globe. Begin to give me some new blessings. Begin to open up some new opportunities inside of my life. You rejoice in hope. You begin to hope. Hope is important, man. Hope got us through the civil rights movement. We wouldn't have made it through the civil rights movement had we not had hope, had we not believed that one day we'd be able to assemble like this. One day we'd be able to eat what we want to eat. One day we'd be able to go where we want to go. One day we would be able to be our own man. It was hope. It was hope that got us through that. And hope is going to get you through every situation, every broken snow globe situation that you're going to go through. Here's the promise. In this world, There will be tribulation. But when you get into tribulation, this is what you got to learn how to be able to do. Be patient. It didn't take, listen, you didn't get into it in one minute. Why, how do you believe you're going to get out of it in one minute? It took, for many of us, it took years of bad decisions and being away from God and not trusting and not making good, not getting advice to get us into this place of tribulation. And now all of a sudden we want to be out of it just like this. For, for, for us who've lost somebody, you have nothing to do with it. It's going to take time. You're not going to replace Big Mom. You're not going to replace your child. You're not going to replace a career. If that, it, listen, if you dream, if your snow globe was that you're going to be married or do this thing or, or have this baby or do this thing, if your snow globe, I know who I'm talking to, required for somebody to be there when you graduated, who am I talking to? Require that person is not going to be there. That person will not be at the wedding. That person will not be. Make, you cannot bring that back. If your snow globe involves a person who is already gone, you got to get up. Be patient in tribulation. It's not going to be easy. It's going to take time for you to, re- to get through this thing. You got to mourn. You got to go through this thing. You have to get help. And, and here's the thing. You come back. You have to pray. You, you, you have to be, this is the word he used, steadfast. 
That means you pray all the time. That means you pray every day. And, and this is what I learned, guys. For any of us, whenever I've gotten stuck, whenever I've, I've turned to something else other than God and, and began to act out, whenever I got to this place where I gave up, it's because one or all three of these things. I was not a person of joy. I was always focused on the sadness, on the loss, on the snow globe. I was not patient. I wanted it fixed now. I wanted to fix the way that I wanted it fixed. I wanted it fixed right in this instance. I was not didn't feel like praying. My snow globe was broke. Here's a promise if you get back up. Let's go to this next verse. Here's the promise right here. Here's the declaration over you as well that you will get back up again. This is what he says. You get to this place where you pray, where you're patient in tribulation. You get to this place where you trust, where you trust God. You get to this place where instead of you trying to fix the snow globe or trying to hold on to it, getting stuck in it, trying to reach out, reach out to painkillers that won't kill the pain. Instead of you getting to this place where you're trying to take it into your own hands or this place where you make a decision to just give up. One part of this, David is even talking about giving up on his life, right? I'd rather be dead. I felt that. I felt that. I'm talking to somebody now. Don't take your life. Don't don't for one minute allow the enemy to make you believe that your broken snow globe is reason for you not to be here. Don't you for one moment believe that your purpose was defined by your snow globe and that if your snow globe doesn't turn out the way you thought it was going to turn out, that you would rather be dead? Who am I talking? I'm talking to somebody. Don't you allow the enemy to get inside of your head and make you believe for one minute that it'll be better for you not to be here since your snow globe not going to happen the way you thought it was going to happen, I'm talking to somebody right now because the enemy is after you. Who am I talking to? The enemy is after you. He wants to use this snow globe experience to not just separate you from God, but to separate you from life all together. And this is what the word of God, this is what David, I want you guys to see this. David writes this. David, who lost his son, whose snow globe broke, it, it's not, his life is not going to be the way he thought it was going to be. It is never going to be the same. His life will never be. He will never have Absalom again. Absalom will not be the king. The way he envisioned life, it is not going to happen. His snow globe is completely crushed. And the same person who wrote this, David, who would have written this after he'd gone through all that situation, this is what he writes. He says, the steps of a good man are ordered by Yahweh. Who is the good man? The one that's steadfast in prayer? Who is the good man? The one that's patient in tribulation? Who is the good man? The one who rejoices in hope? He says that when you get to that place where you rejoice in hope, you are steadfast in prayer, and regardless of what tribulation, what snow globe breaks inside of your life, you're patient through that and you mourn through that. He he says that God begins to order your, 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 your uh, steps, and he delights in the way. And look what he says. Though he what? Fall. Though he fall, he shall, look what it says, not be utterly cast down. Though he fall, the one who trusts God, the one who prays steadfast, with steadfast prayer, the one who comes before God with steadfast prayer, the one who trusts him in the midst of the tribulation and continues to be patient and continues to trust God, the one who rejoices in hope, when he goes through a fall, he will not be utterly cast down. Nothing can hold you down. He doesn't say that you won't fall. 
But what he says is, when you fall, you will not be held down. You will not be cast down. Why? Because Yahweh upholds him with his hand. God, literally, when we pray, when we come before him with prayers, when we come before him, listen to this, patient inside of tribulation, when we come before him rejoicing in hope, his hand comes in. His hand helps us get up. We don't get ourselves up. But what happens is God reaches down inside of our lives and he begins to lift us up. And he says his hand is with us. And he says, I've been young and I am and I'm now old, yet I have not seen. Never seen a righteous person forsaken. I have a question for you. It's a simple question. What is God saying to you about the way you handle the falls in your life, the tribulations, the things that don't go exactly how you thought they were going to go? Because what Jesus tells us in this world, he guarantees us. In this world, there are going to be tribulations. There'll be falls. There'll be things that'll happen. Things won't go the way that they're planned. Snow globes. They're going to break in this world. The question is, what is God saying to you about the way you've handled the snow globe thing? What is that thing? That snow globe thing. That you prayed and believed and it broke. And it's not going to happen the way that you thought it was going to happen. And how are you responding to that? Have you allowed yourself to get stuck? Are you acting out? You know you weren't raised that way. Who am I talking to? You know you weren't raised that way. Are you acting out? Have you given up? Are you contemplating hurting yourself or... Just separating yourself from life altogether. What is God saying? Not about you, but to you. Why does he have you here today in order to hear us talk about this particular thing? What is God saying to you? And how is your life going to be different when you make the decision today to get back up again? So this week, that's why I want you to get into your heart, into your spirit. Every time. Somebody say every time. Every time. Somebody say every time again. Every time. every time I fall down, this is what's going to happen. I will get back up again. I want you guys to say this together. Say it like you mean it. Say it like you believe it. Listen, I am believing that as you are making this declaration over your life, that God is now moving in your life in a mighty way. And regardless of what your snow globe situation is, regardless of what you've been faced with, regardless of what you're going through, that God is going to move inside of your new thing, your old thing, your present thing. I'm believing that as you make the declaration and as you begin to call out to God, what do you say? As you begin to rejoice in hope, as you begin to get to this place where you become patient and accepting of the tribulation that's happened inside of your life, as you get to this place where you become a person that prays and speaks to God and meditates and gets before the Lord and worships Him, as you let go of that acting out stuff, as you allow yourself not to be stuck any longer, as you allow yourself not to give up, that God is moving inside of your situation that he's changing your life right now. In an instance, your life is being changed. In an instance, as you make this decision, God is already beginning to give you the wisdom, the direction. I'm believing that connections are being set up in front of you. Advisors are being sent your way. Resources are being sent your way. That God is going to send to you because he has never forsaken you. And although you fail 
Today is your day to get back up again. To God be the glory. Amen. Amen. So, if, if this is you and you've never accepted Christ in your life, online or in this place, if you are separated from Christ, if you fell down, and because you fell down, you know that you have been praying, that you haven't been in this place where you've been hopeful, that you haven't been in this place where you've dealt well with the tribulation in your life, patiently with the tribulation in your life, why don't you come back and connect your life with Christ today? If you've never made him head of your life, this is the day in which you start brand new. These ministers and deacons are up here now to receive you. If you're in need of prayer, don't you, be ashamed, don't you let the enemy stop you from coming up here and getting prayed over your situation. You know you walked in here with something. You don't need to walk out with it. Don't you worry about what nobody's going to say or what they're going to look at you. And think about you, get yourself up here and get you some prayer today. And if you're looking for a church, online or in this place, we want you to come and be a part of what we're doing at Uplift. If you just want to come under watch care for a period of time online, if you want to come under watch care in this place for a period of time, you need to be connected with people who can help you to get through the snow globes that you've been through in your life. To God be the glory. Amen. Glory, glory, we will lift you up.